My friends, there's something I need to tell you. The souls in purgatory are stalking me. So not really, I just titled this video that so I can get your attention. But there are some things that have been happening with the souls in purgatory. First of all, just in my videos, sometimes I'll put a lot of time into different videos and the ones that get the most interest are the ones on purgatory. So I'm getting the message either from you or from God that I need to focus on this. And yes, they have been following me even in my trip to New Mexico. Check out that last video where they literally stopped us in our tracks through these railroad tracks so that we can pray for them at that small Encino cemetery. So uh, some and many years ago, I was reading this book called Mystical City of God by Venerable Mary of Agreda, an amazing book. And at the time I had a spiritual director who said, you know, maybe don't focus on that, focus on the scriptures. So I read some of it and then I kind of put it away. Well, some years later, I, I made another video about how I found like, I think a $2 copy of the four volume that you can get on the Kindle. Normally that would cost like about $80. And I started reading it. And that book is simply amazing. Well, I started researching a little bit more about Venerable Mary of Agreda and her story. So she was a Spanish nun, but as it turns out, she had the gift of bilocation. And she happened to bilocate to the area of Beaumont, Texas, and to New Mexico, both places where I've been. My wife's uncle actually died in Beaumont, and we went to a church there called St. Anne. And at that church, they have these beautiful murals that are paintings of the, her apparitions. She would appear to the Native Americans in those regions and teach them, and they knew her as the lady in blue. And the Franciscan missionaries, when they arrived in the United States, they had these Indians coming to them asking for baptism, and they were like, what's going on? Well, they heard about this lady in blue from all over the place, over 500 apparitions, and then they realized that she had been visiting with them through, um, through by location. They actually interviewed her back in Spain realized she was the same person and she confirmed, she basically confessed, yes, I was bilocating, sorry about that. And well, she was appearing in the region of New Mexico, right where I was, and I didn't even realize it. So that that region, New Mexico, has a lot of Catholic history because she was appearing around the 1600s or so. I just saw that in those areas that I was, that we were driving as a family, there was all this holiness that I wasn't even aware of and that the, that the Native Americans were being uh, evangelized even before the missionaries physically arrived. That's probably one of the most amazing stories that we know of in terms of evangelization. I wanted to read a book about Venerable Mary of Agreda, which I actually never purchased. And I looked it up and New Mexico University Press has a book on her. And I thought, I need to read this because if the secular university sees this as such a historical part of, of, of their story, you know, they're not Catholic, then it must be true. I mean, that's how serious they take it. So I'll be making more videos about that. But as I was researching that, I saw another book called The Souls of Purgatory. And I had never seen that book. And so then I actually bought that book. And that book is about a Peruvian mystic from the 1600s. I believe she was a Franciscan and her name was Ursula of Jesus. She was born uh, a slave. I think her mother was a slave. Her father was a free person. It was something like that, but she was a slave and she kind of was in ownership until later on in her life. She eventually joined this Franciscan community and she was there at a time in Lima, Peru, where there was a lot of kind of holiness things happening. There was several movements that were happening, including St. Rose of Lima, who was alive around that same time. This nun had the gift of seeing the souls in purgatory. They would appear to her and she would pray for them and atone for their sins and pray for them and ha have all these sort of revelations. And she kept a diary of all of these apparitions. And then that diary was translated and that's the book. The book gives kind of a background into who she is and portions of her diary. You know, um, in terms of purgatory, I had found almost every book on purgatory but obviously the souls in purgatory were like, no, there's this other one that's really awesome. Now she has a really cool story. People venerated her and thought she was really holy despite the fact that she was a slave, she was black, so she was discriminated against, but they realized she was a holy woman and there was even something of a following. Well, they were getting, after, after she died, they were getting all the paperwork for her canonization um, probably copies of things and all, all types of things. And you can imagine at that time that the paperwork was very difficult to get. Well, that was all on a ship headed to Europe. 
and this was all going to be proof so that she could be canonized and that ship got caught in a storm sank and the evidence was lost and she was never even declared uh, blessed or venerable or anything she's just ursula of jesus perhaps she wanted to remain humble both in life and in death but i want to tell her story so i will be sharing more about her because she is quite interesting you, you have to her book is a little hard to find but uh, it's called the souls of purgatory ursula of jesus the beginning kind of gives history of what was going on at the time and then it begins telling her very interesting story so my friends i am going to be making more videos about purgatory because clearly that's what you like and what a wonderful people to serve god bless you and i'll see you in the next video